The J-35 is a Chinese stealth fighter currently in development, it is likely to become the first Chinese aircraft carrier-borne stealth jet. The J-35 is reported to be initiated by Shenyang Aviation Industry, aims at international market instead of Chinese Air Force or Navy at the beginning, which is not uncommon in Chinese military industry in recent years. The J-35 is based on FC-31 export fighter flew in Zhuhai Air Show. But most analysts believe FC-31 is only a demonstrator aircraft, not ready for foreign clients. One main reason is the J-20 large-size stealth fighter from Chengdu Aviation Industry, the main competitor of Shenyang, has secured Chinese Air Force contract, that leaves not much room for J-35 medium-sized stealth fighter in Air Force. But it is a totally different story in Chinese Navy, it is still building its latest Type 003 aircraft carrier, therefore the contract of carrier-borne stealth fighter jet has not been concluded. There is also suspicion that Chinese strategy planners would like to keep two major fighter jet suppliers to keep competition in the industry. Shenyang is reported to be having difficulty developing its own advanced fighter jet, it has been working on Sukhoi 27 family for two decades, and then FC-31 export fighter which seems to experience at least two rounds of major design change. Many online sources indicated Shenyang is not capable of independently developing a stealth fighter, and Chengdu Aviation Industry have stepped in to push the J-35 project forward. After FC-31, a so-called J-35 1.0 fighter prototype made first flight around 2020. Then a significantly different prototype, nicknamed J-35 2.0 made first flight in September 2021. These three aircrafts confirm there is major setback in the project, the design had to be revamped twice to reach maturity, a signal that Shenyang is indeed having issues to become a true advanced fighter jet design and development organization. After J-35 2.0 first flew, it is reported to be the second Chinese stealth fighter after the J-20 and the second Chinese carrier-based fighter after the J-15. The J-15 is another Shenyang Sukhoi variant. The J-35 is also the second stealth carrier-based fighter in the world besides the US-made F-35. Considering other countries have not progressed that much in their stealth fighter projects, the J-35 is likely the second stealth carrier-borne fighter to enter service in the world. This makes the J-35 a direct competitor of the US F-35, and of course considering tension between the two countries, it is important to compare the two. In the near future, after the Type 003 aircraft carrier with electromagnetic catapult enters service, J-35 fighters will truly become its perfect match and participate the possible Taiwan Strait War. And it is quite possible in that war, J-35 could enter a combat against F-35. The latest J-35 prototype first flew on October 29, 2021 in Shenyang. Prior to the first flight, Sun Kong, chief designer of the J-15 carrier-borne aircraft, said during the Zhuhai Air Show the new fighter could enter service within one or two years. But he might be over-optimistic as the new fighter will need to go through throughout testing before receiving acceptance of Chinese Navy or Air Force. A few photos have surfaced showing the new J-35 2.0 prototype has characteristics of carrier-borne aircraft. The front landing gear has twin front wheels, similar to the J-15, and is fitted with a carrier catapult towing bar for the coming Type 003 carrier. The Type 003 carrier under construction will most likely use electromagnetic catapults, if not steam catapults, that means the J-35 is a direct match for the Type 03. The J-15 has also had a new variant suitable for catapult launch. Considering the construction cycle and test cycle of the Type 003 aircraft carrier, the J-35 will still have at least one or two years to go through testing before touching down on the carrier for the first time. But that would still be a very tight deadline. There is also rumor that Chengdu might design a carrier variant of J-20 fighter to compete with J-35. Or, as mentioned previously, Chengdu Aviation Industry could be already involved in J-35 project. It is worth pointing out the difference between J-35 2.0 prototype and FC-31 demonstrator. Compared with the earlier FC-31, the J-35 has a foldable wing design with a larger wingspan and a shortened canopy. In addition, a suspected electro-optical targeting system is mounted below the nose. The J-35 has a forward-opening cockpit canopy design, very similar to the F-35. The PLAS Active J-20 and other most of the aircraft are backward-opened. The reason J-35 has smaller canopy could be the backside of fuselage is increased in size, making the canopy smaller to give way to the bigger backside structure. This is also quite similar to the design of F-35. 
After all these changes, the J-35 2.0 prototype is closer to a combat-ready fighter jet, while FC-31 gave everyone the impression of being rough in many aspects, even causing suspicion that the project is not well managed. And this prototype is a lot closer to the look and feel of a US F-35. But it definitely has a very different body, as J-35 has two Russian RD-93 turbofan engine instead of one single engine, making the majority of fuselage different from the F-35. Clearly the J-35 2.0 prototype does not have the final appearance of future mass production model. It is still the so-called green jet, and the J-35 1.0 prototype was a yellow jet. The word green is referring to anti-rust base paint of the aircraft, it is not the final exterior paint or the camouflage, no mention the stealth coating. The radar, cockpit canopy structure, vertical tail and leading edge of the wing all have different colors, likely due to they are not using the same materials and no need to be covered with anti-rust paint. For composite materials, it takes up a big percentage in the J-35 2.0 prototype which is common in modern fighter design. Some composite are actually painted, mainly to prevent its absorption of water vapor or ultraviolet radiation, reducing structural strength decline and aging. Importantly stealth coating itself can be corrosive, and the anti-rust layer forms an effective isolation between the fuselage and stealth coating, prolong the lifespan of the airframe. The reason Prototype 1.0 has yellow base paint is likely just a slightly different paint, not a meaningful difference comparing with the 2.0. One thing agreed by all analysts is that engine could be the biggest challenge to the J-35 project. No details has been revealed, but it is believed that FC-31 and the two J-35 prototype aircrafts are using Russian RD-93 turbofans, possibly RD-93MA engines and eventually the fighter will switch to domestically developed WS-19 turbofan, expected to be above 100 kN thrust engine, and RD-93MA which is 90 kN will remain as an option. For comparison, F-14A used two TF-30 engines which was only 93 kN each, so J-35 with RD-93MA would have similar thrust to weight ratio as F-14A. But worth noting a stealth design has bigger drag in general. And the F-35 uses one single F-135 turbofan that pumps out 177 kN, but it is unlikely China will be able to achieve that in an engine that can be ready in three to five years. At present, the J-15 is the Chinese Navy's only carrier-borne fighter. As a heavy fighter matching the size of F-14 Tomcat, it has excellent flight performance and has almost perfect ammunition load, speed, range and other aspects, but its biggest defect is there is no consideration of stealth in its design, which limits the effectiveness of combating U.S. advanced military platforms. The J-35 will make up for this shortfall, showing that China is not only building J-20 fighters to defend its own territory, but also creating a world-class blue water strike force to deter U.S. forces in Asia-Pacific. As details of the J-35 is still secretly guarded, we will have to refer to data from the FC-31 promotional materials. It is expected that the J-35 can reach a maximum flight speed of Mach 1. 8, and a maximum combat radius of 1,250 kilometers, both of which are higher than the US F-35. With aerial refueling, it can easily reach 1,900 kilometers. And it can maneuver at 9G, matching most advanced fighters. And the J-35 is a twin-engine fighter, which has better redundancy than the single-engine F-35, this is a vital consideration for carrier-borne fighter jet. Regarding weapons the J-35 can carry, in a typical interception mission, it is expected to carry four PL-15 active radar-guided medium-range missiles and possibly two PL-10 dogfighter missiles below its wings. In terms of avionics of the J-35, it definitely will be the highest level of integrated avionics system that China can produce. Considering the larger J-20 was developed more than 10 years ago, the J-35 would have a better avionics comparing the J-20. There is almost no public information, but it would be a highly integrated system that focus on battlefield awareness automation and network-centric design. The highlights would be helmet-mounted display, full-spectrum electric optical suite, active phase array radar, and high-speed battlefield data network system. Regarding radar, China has been deploying active phase array radars on both J-10C and J-20. The latest J-16 large-size fighter is reported to have the same technology. Even the latest batch of JF-17 fighters exported to Pakistan has it. So it is for certain that the J-35 will have a powerful state-of-the-art radar. 
In the future, if the J-35 wins the contract from Chinese Navy, it will become the most important player of Chinese aircraft carrier strike group, which can not only defend the group but also carry a variety of weapons according to battlefield situation and strike a complex adverse enemy force possibly armed with stealth fighters. With its stealth advantage, the J-35 will place huge pressure on any enemy force, as it is very difficult to detect it at the same range comparing with the J-15. And it certainly adopts the same level avionics and data network technologies as J-20 or the latest J-10C, making it fit into latest Chinese integrated battlefield system easily. And the J-35 can also control multiple combat drones, which would be a common feature of the best modern fighter, magnifying its capacity. It is reported that the Attack 11 combat drone would be the first choice to pair with the J-35. If the J-35 project overcomes existing challenges, it will give China a perfect pair of stealth fighters, the J-20 heavy fighter playing a spearhead role, and the J-35 sit in the category of balancing budget pressure and the demand of having large amount of stealth fighters. That makes the Chinese Air Force keenly looking into the project, even though it already has around 100 J-20 fighters and could have 500 J-20 fighters before 2025. The J-35 might be a key missing piece of the roadmap building a true strategic air force, resolving the issue that China cannot procure enough J-20 fighters to meet its ultimate goal, deterring U.S. forces in Asia-Pacific. The J-35 can change this and ensure Chinese Air Force reaching well over 1,000 stealth fighter jets, well above the number of stealth fighters U.S. can deploy to Asia-Pacific and stop U.S. from intervening the possible Taiwan Strait War. In that scenario, China can easily overcome the defense of Taiwan military forces and retake the island with relatively small loss. In the future Chinese aircraft carrier strike group, the J-35 will be working a few advanced military aircrafts, like the KJ-600 carrier-borne early warning aircraft, the carrier-borne Attack 11 large combat drones, and the Z-20 utility and anti-submarine helicopters. It can also join force with the Air Force J-20 fighters and the Stealth H-20 strategic bomber. With a few aircraft carrier strike groups at this level working with land-based forces, especially the highly sophisticated anti-carrier ballistic missiles, China can only secure the battlefield in Taiwan Strait, but also pose major threat between the first island chain and the second island chain, forcing U.S. to back down from directly supporting Taiwan defense or push U.S. military far away from Taiwan to reduce its effectiveness. The FC-31 project was started as an export fighter, but that is the result of Chinese military procurement procedure. In recent years, Chinese military expect design and manufacturing corporations to invest their own resources on initial demonstration stage, and the military will only partner with the corporation and provide funding after the project is proven to have sufficient outcome. That makes most Chinese military industry players brand their inventions and export product and promote to international clients, which in some cases securing funding from foreign sources, then the success attracts Chinese military to become a partner in the project. Unfortunately that is not the case for the FC-31 project, one factor is that this stealth fighter jet could be extremely expensive to most of the typical foreign buyers of Chint's weapon. Once Chinese military is on board with the J-35 project, it might open the door for foreign buyers to participate in the project. It is worth noting that due to the possible Taiwan Strait War, China might not have sufficient capacity to provide stealth fighters to foreign clients, all J-20 and J-35 would be prioritized to Chinese military at least for a few years. But it would not be a surprise J-20 or J-35 might find a foreign buyer. And the key factor is that very few country can produce this kind of exceptional fighter jets. That could be another major breakthrough for Chinese military industry, as stealth fighter is the crown jewel of weapons available in international market, bringing China into the age of becoming one of the top two military asset suppliers in the world. Eventually the Chinese stealth fighter could go to countries like Pakistan or Myanmar, or some Middle East or African countries that don't want to solely rely on US weapons, like Saudi and UAE. And of course it will then become the biggest competitor to the US F-35 fighter. And regardless if it is J-20 or J-35, Chinese stealth fighter will definitely render Eurofighter Typhoon, Rafale, and Su-35 useless on the battlefield. According to statistics, the total value of China's military aircraft exports between 2000 and 2020 was $7.2 billion. During the same period, the United States remained the top seller of military aircraft, exporting $99. 6 billion, followed by Russia with $61.5 billion. 
France's military aircraft exports during the period also exceeded China's by more than double, reaching $14.7 billion. The stats indicate there is a huge market that China can tap into. A good news to the Chinese military industry is that J-10CP fighter is being delivered to Pakistan in 2022, paving the road for more advanced Chinese fighter jet. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe, share and comment. It will really help us developing this channel and bring you